video. I have been taking photos this week of some of my latest creations for Threads of a Fairy Tale but my first session didn't last very long because the sun went behind the clouds and it was just so annoying <laughs> that uh, I'd lugged all of the clothes outside and then I gave up because just the lighting conditions weren't right and if there's one thing I've learned is that lighting is absolutely key to getting some pretty photographs and it's really annoying because I wanted to hang them on the archway which leads from our sort of patio area to our main garden and the problem with that is our house sort of faces southeast so at this time of year the sun goes behind the house really quickly and puts all that bit in shade and also in the garden we've got a big tree that puts the garden in shade so I was really limited for time in the end I had to give up even my lens baby filter kit didn't wasn't gonna help the situation so i went out again i think a couple of days later and this time it was much more successful but even then i did have to cut it short but i had a question on instagram the other day about how i got a rainbow effect was it a rainbow effect or was it a foggy effect i can't remember which one it was now i thought i might have a little chat to you about it on youtube because i thought you might be interested if you wanted to do some creative photography so here is my photo setup so this is my camera that i use and i know it's diddy compared to the dslrs that particularly the ones that my husband used to use, even he's got a smaller camera now. So this is the Panasonic Lumix GM1, DC, D, DMC GM1. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, so it's a mirrorless micro four thirds camera. So it looks like a point and shoot and you can use it like a point and shoot if you want to really, because it's got all the simple features on there as well but the lenses are interchangeable. So this is the kit lens it came with, 12 to 32 millimeters, but you can double that to uh, get what you would get with a standard, what's that called? Full frame camera, <laughs> a full frame camera. This kit lens had really, really good reviews. So I do use this quite a lot just for, if I'm having a day out and I'm not, and I know I'm not gonna have time to do any proper photography, I just take this and it's so lightweight and it's so easy and you get really good results with it still so I'm happy with that but Chris bought me this lens a couple of years ago and oh my god this is a game changer I absolutely adore it this is the Sigma 56 millimeter 1.4 and so you get that gorgeous bokeh is that how you say it <laughs> that word didn't exist when I was learning photography <laughs> we just said blurred backgrounds <laughs> so you get the nice blurred backgrounds with this and just it just make it just ups your photography another level it really does I mean they say photography isn't about the equipment but I actually disagree if you're not doing landscape I think landscape photography I would say that 
possibly is the case. If you're into landscapes, it's about the effort of getting to the places that other people haven't been to, getting up early to get the sunrise, staying up late to get the sunset, and uh, spending a long time walking about, finding the right composition. I think that that is the key of getting good landscape photography. But if you're doing product photography, like floral photography, like blossoms and flowers, or just sort of lifestyle photography, if you want to get a nice, I don't know, a picture of a stack of notebooks with your desk all blurred in the background. I really rate this lens, but you do have to stand quite a long way back to get those effects. That's the only downside. So I actually use this for my fashion photography as well. Um, if it's me doing the pictures, which I, I tend to do if it's the kids modelling. This is the lens I use to get that nice blurred background, but I do have to stand quite far away from the models. That's the disadvantage of it. When the picture needs a little more oomph, <laughs> a little more something special than this is another present from Chris I think this was my birthday present last year Christmas present last year I'm, I can't remember and this is the lens baby omni filter kit and this is what I was using for my photographs the other day of the clothes hanging on the archway and so what you do is you screw this on the front of the lens like you would for any filter so the smallest size because i've got such a small camera i couldn't get one to fit this so i have to use this lens with it i'll show you how to use it like this i'll just hold it I can't believe my like gardening bucket is full just from this tiny little patch here. So this has been bugging me for days. That bindweed was just shooting out like a meter per day. Obviously, I haven't managed to pull out all the roots yet, but I'll dig that over with a fork on a dry day to try and just dry out the roots. But yeah, that's looking better than it was, wasn't it? So you just screw it on the front like you would a filter a filter holder and then you've got this bit here which is magnetic and then it comes with three different things to distort your pictures we've got this curly sort of crystal here we've got a uh, just sort of a film here and we've got sort of a curved prism there's also two more of the bits that can go on here so you can use these differently as well. You can stack them up and uh, use more on top of each other and that sort of thing. So then these being magnetic as well, the ball fits, clips onto there. So then you move that however you want it. And then you've got two hands to compose the shot. And that gives you all sorts of opportunities for creative effects. It's really cool. It, it adds a little bit of magic, I suppose, to the picture. If you want your photos to look very realistic, then this is not the kit for you. But yeah I really enjoy using this this is good fun so that gives like you like little rainbows and then these two I can't tell you exactly what they do because I seem to get different results with different lighting it makes such a difference anyway this one can give a really good sort of fog effect so when we were in America and with I was wanted to take pictures of this beautiful scene of this frozen lake and this forest behind it and then it just clouded right over the sun disappeared it was actually a bit before it started to snow i lost the light completely and the pictures were looking flat so i used this and it sort of gave it foggy effect but sometimes it doesn't do that sometimes it um gives a bit of a sort of a fast blurred effect almost like there's something moving fast on there and this glass crystally one so i think this is called the crystal seahorse <laughs> and um, this one just refracts the light in all different ways and you get all different i don't know like um uh, like it, it can 
mirror the image sometimes sometimes it can just copy it like you get little bits all of the same thing all showing in one area or just sometimes it can just move the light and it, it's really hard to explain but it's a fun one to try so that's that's basically an explanation on how I get some of the effects that I use in my photography I don't tend to use it very often when I'm doing photos of the kids wearing the clothes just because there's so much to think about in the moment already I don't need something else to think about I think um, particularly when I've got a whole pile of clothes that we need to photograph in one go I think if I just made one dress and we then did one photo shoot then I might be a bit more experimental but um, at the moment it's just for playing with when the clothes are not on a model mention where I won't um, go into it too much I haven't used this for a while but I also have this lens baby lens that Chris gave me a few years ago now and this is a really fun lens to use as well you can actually get three different effects on the one lens you just sort of twist it to which one you like so there's one called sweet one called velvet and one called twist and I do use the twist one the most and what that does is it looks like there's almost like a spiral of light. It's like a real um, circular effect of blurriness behind your subject. The velvet gives it just a nice soft velvet look, so that's good for portraits. And the sweet, I think that just gives the background a blur, blurred effect and gives the central point, keeps the central point nice and sharp. So that's also a bit of a creative photography kit that I use, again, um, for product photos. But before this, where's it gone? Before, <laughs> here, before this big lens existed, this is actually something that I did use for, for portrait on the twist or the sweet mode. In the past, there was no other way to get that blurry background with this particular camera. So I would do the portraits with that. I had to make sure that everyone's heads were in the centre of the frame. And you're used to like here now I'm looking in the screen. My face, my eyes are about on the top third line of the shots and that is usually how you do people's faces. If I was down here it would be a bit weird. There'd be a bit too much above my head but I would have to remember to do that with this. Anyway I'm sorry I'm rambling on. If you're not interested in photography this whole bit will be totally boring for you there we are i thought i'd show you my secret to some of my photos and if you want to have a try with this the kit itself is a bit pricey for what it is i think it's about 120 pounds but if you want to give things like this a go you can always do it by holding things in front of the camera all sorts of things you know i just i'm looking at my water glass here put that up close to the camera just in the corner and see what effects you get or a bit of cling film or a bit of bubble wrap I'm just looking around at what I've got around me a bit of net curtain or lace or something putting things right up close to the camera lens and usually just in the corner just subtly you know can just give a nice dreamy effect so I thought it might be what something you might like to give a try if you're into your photography That was part of my obelisk, Merlin. <laughs> He's having a lot of fun with that stick though. No, 
outside and you're making strange noises. Shush. <laughs> well, I, uh, I haven't finished it. There's a whole load more roses all tangled up. They, I don't know if you can tell from here, but they go right out to there. They've just spread out everywhere because they've had nothing to climb on. I'm pleased with how it looks. I think it looks quite pretty how it is. So when all these roses are all tied up, I'm gonna get myself some, I think I've run out of thin string. I've got some really thick stuff, but I think I need to go and buy some thin string to tie in the stems that don't wanna go up there on their own. I think that looks lovely actually. I think it looks proper country gardenish. And hopefully we can get the pink rose right up to the top. But sadly it's the pink rose that only flowers once. The um, the white rose which isn't quite as uh, vigorous. That's the word. Vigorous, that's a good word isn't it? If I keep deadheading that one that will flower right until autumn. So hopefully we'll get some good colour going up the new obelisk for the rest of the summer. Right, unbelievably, it is quarter to nine and I've still got a few things to do this evening. So I'm gonna call it a day and finish it properly another time. Gosh, this is the first nice evening we've had in weeks. It really feels that way. Yeah, it's just been cloudy. Even if it's not raining, it's just been cloudy. So it's nice to see a nice summer evening for a change. Right, I feel like I'm repeating myself and rambling. So I'm gonna say goodbye for now. Right, well, it's Chris's birthday today. We've had a nice morning. We popped over to Streep and we ate at Frankie and Benny's because we could with Merlin. We still haven't left him on his own. We're gonna have some work to do there, I fear. But at least we can sit outside and we were in under the cover because it, it started to rain quite heavily. And the staff there were really, really nice to him. And it was, yeah, so it was a nice, nice meal out for his birthday. I now need to go and ice his cake. I oh, I think we're gonna watch a film. I don't know what we're gonna watch yet. And then it's of course the Euro football final. So I have to be honest, I'm not the slightest bit interested in football, but I do recognize that this is quite a momentous occasion. So I think we're gonna dip in probably just the last half hour of the game and see what's going on. So we need to make sure we allow time for that. I'll know by the time I edit this, whether we've won, if we did, yay. Go people kicking a ball around a field. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was a bit facetious of me. I think that's all I've got to update you on today. Hope you're well, hope you're having a good week. Um, don't forget if you'd like some more sewing content that is mainly on my Patreon. Um, so do go and check that out. It's just patreon.com slash Helen Hobden. Um, if you fancy some more content from me during the month, there's two videos every every month plus lots of behind the scenes updates with photos of what I'm doing and that sort of thing. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.